I have a vacuum pump, but I didn't have a vacuum tweezer. So I looked at what's typical and a solenoid at the vacuum pump is common and a bleed hole in the handle where you just cover the bleed hole with your fingertip to act as a valve where it closes off ambient air to the to the uh, tube going to the vacuum and the nozzle and then you release it with your finger. Um, didn't really like either one of those. Uh, there's quite a, a lag um, in the response because you are basically have this long tube that's acting like a capacitor that has to be charged with the vacuum that you're pulling. Um, it probably doesn't isn't that noticeable but from a technical standpoint I just thought that wasn't ideal. So I thought how can I make a valve where that dead zone, the amount of capacitance or the amount of uh, accumulator effect in pneumatic or hydraulic terms is minimized. So I said if I put the valve right at the nozzle and have it such that when it's off the vacuum is blocked so that the full vacuum available from the pump can build up in the tube all the way up to the handle then I've got somewhat of an optimum situation. So what I did was just took some ordinary tubing your typical hobby tubing 1 64th wall tubing and I ovalized the tubes so that would have a rectangular slot and uh, the reason I'm doing that or oval slot uh, is that I want a very short stroke I don't want to have a huge amount of distance to travel for that to actuate and I also want as large a orifice size so that my restriction to the flow is, mi is minimal so that's why we're using a slot there that's a 1 32nd inch slot uh, 31 thousandths and that is there to um, act as our valve. So here, the tube that is feeding the vacuum, this tube in the back here, this tube has a vacuum buildup because it's sealed off here. There's an extremely small gap between this. Um, it, the gap is so small that if I close this and just flex the body, it will stick there because of the just a little bit of flex. So that cl clearance there is extremely small. So there's a very slight leakage there, but uh, not enough to matter. But basically you're building up the full vacuum of the vacuum system. And then when you come to here, the only section that has to charge is this short section of tube here to the tip. And when you release, the ambient air has full access to quickly come in as opposed to when you have a valve all the way at the, at the vacuum pump end of your system. So um, this is just made out of brass tubing, hobby tubing, this outer body is the brass tubing, this inner piece is there. The reason this is so long is I felt how much spring was involved in flexing this tube. And in order for it to be a reasonable amount of spring pressure so you don't fatigue your fingers, it needed to be this long back here where it's rigidly attached. And the spring steel is just there to be an actuator. It's not adding any pressure. There's the little... Um, piece of round stock that's on there to actuate it and it stops its position stops is from hitting the other side of the tube here so this is all just soldered together brass pieces these outer uh, pieces are spring blue tempered spring steel uh, I turned a lure taper to match the you know your typical fittings and this end is just straight for your vacuum hose to go on so this can be used either in this orientation if you like uh, normal tweezer effect or this orientation where you use your finger on top or if you feel like having your thumb more stationary you can use your finger that way so you can orient it any way you want um, and this works very effectively I uh, just thought you might like to see a um, brainstorm on um, how to make a, an effective vacuum tweezer valve I hope you found that interesting and informative if so please give it a thumbs up